finding gratitude in the everyday. This, this is where thankfulness begins. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord. You are so good and you are so ever faithful, Lord. And Father, sometimes we forget to say thank you. And Father, we ask you to forgive us. Because you've given us so much, Lord God, Father, our heart should be overflowing every day and every moment of every day with gratitude. Thank you, Lord God, that in the, the moments of our life, you're there. And Father, that it's not just about eternity, but it's about today. And I thank you, Father. And I ask you today, Lord God, Father, that this message that you put upon my heart, Lord, this is your word and not mine. And that you be lifted up and that you be glorified. Father, that all the praise and all the honor and glory be yours forever. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, last week, I challenged you, and I don't know if you remember what the challenge was, but instead of No Shave November, I declared that this month was going to be a Thanksgiving month, and that in every day, we we're going to learn how to say thank you for something to God, like a letter that we write. And if you haven't, that's okay. Start today. Start again. It says it takes a couple weeks for it to become a habit, and I think that would be an awesome thing, that if we as the body of Christ could learn to say thank you to God every moment and every day. Amen? Last week we talked about how the king pursued us, and how, and I shared in that my salvation story, and how grateful we should be because he pursued us when we couldn't. When we were caught in sin, he paved the way. And what a, what a gratitude and heart of gratitude I have for that. And for many years, because I got saved when I was eight, right before my ninth birthday, and I remember that specifically. I don't remember the exact day, but I got my first Bible when I was nine on my birthday. And I loved it. My mom had put the na my name in the front. And it was very precious to me, but it was King James Version Bible. So as a nine-year-old with a King James Version Bible, it's kind of hard to get a hold of. N Normally, in your conversation as a nine-year-old, you don't use the words verily and where to, wherefore and there are two and all of that. And so I grew up in the church, and I love the church. And so what became my favorite thing was the Bible stories. Those are the things that I treasured, and I realized many years later that's what God used to teach me because I couldn't understand everything. But when it came to the point where I could, I didn't realize that I should. And so I depended on other people and on the church to teach me. And somewhere along the line, I became very desperate because I was in a church and every week it seemed like we would be praying for the same things. Whoever was sick, whoever was downtrod, they were still sick and they were still downtrod. And I looked at that and it became a real search in my life because I was like, where is God and where's his power? If I go to the book of Acts, that shouldn't be a history story that's somewhere in the past. It should be a history story of today. That God is still moving. If Jesus said even greater things are we going to do, where are the greater things? And I started looking at those around me. Because I was looking for that older person in faith that had it. That had walked and knew what it was like to walk in power. There was one dear lady, um, she did, I didn't know her very long, and I just started kind of getting to know her, but she was the one that I saw, I was like, there is joy. She was over 70, I think 70 some years old, and I thought, there's joy, that's what it should be like. Every week we should have victory, every week, there should be something more. And we, in the process, we moved. And I, and I was really desperate. And there was one day, there was a sermon on the road to Emmaus, 
where they grab hold of Jesus and they won't let him leave. And they press into that. And I thought, God, if I've got to press, I'm going to press. Because I'm desperate. I had four children at that time. And I loved them. I loved my husband. I loved what God had done. I loved the fact I was saved. But I'm going to tell you, every single day, I battled. I battled thoughts. I battled depression. I battled discouragement. And I thought, where is the victory? If I am a believer of Jesus Christ, where is my victory? And I, I remember being in my room by myself. And I thought, I'm going to be like that disciples. I'm going to hold on to you till you come through. Because you either answer me in this moment with whatever it is you got to do, or you take me home. Because I can't see the extent of my life. Another, at that time I was in my 30s, another who knows how many years living like I am living today, every single day, a struggle. Now, I understand in this world we have struggles, but if we have Jesus Christ, we should be victorious in those struggles. We should be walking with authority. And that moment when I was crying out for the Lord, he answered me. And he filled me with his Holy Spirit, and I was swept away by who he was. But it became a search from that point. And I went to this pastor that was at the church. And I was like, you know, uh, because they didn't necessarily believe the full entire gospel. And I was like, show me. Because I can go into a bookstore and I can find this viewpoint and I can find this viewpoint. And I don't know about you, but if it's not supported in God's word, I don't even want to hear it. Because I'm that desperate to, to live my life according to his plan. And so I called him. I said, okay, show me. You know, where is God in healing? Because I, I see a different picture than what we're believing for. And I remember that he, um, and I was really grieved and I didn't even understand why, but in that moment, he was, he, because, because he believed that those things ended when Jesus left. I feel like it's still going on. There's still power to be found in him. And he, he kind of laughed. There's this verse that's in the end of Mark, and it talks about how even if you touch any poisonous thing, like a snake, it will not hurt you. And he he like laughed at that. I was like, what? Because I'm going to tell you, one of my children had gotten a hold of some medicine that they shouldn't have. And trust me, that was the verse I stood on. Like, what? And I was so frustrated. I got off the phone with him. And I remember I kind of um, gently threw my Bible to the side. <laughs> I was like, God, where is it? And he spoke to me. He said, go back to Ephesians 4, where I was at. And it says there in, in 4, 21, it says that all the truth is in Christ. And so I thought, if all the truth is in Jesus, then I'm just going to look at the Gospels. And I'm going to start with Matthew. I'm going to say, who are you? Are you my healer? Are you something more than just my Savior? What are you and who are you? And I, it, I, I, I got enrolled in this... Um, course, Bible correspondence course, for a year and a half, I just intensely studied my authority in Christ, divine healing, who he was and who he is, and everything he has done on the cross. It says in 3 John 1, 2, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. The Bible is full of verses that address the whole person. The whole person. And I looked at that and I thought, wait a minute. If it's in his word, then it's from his heart. 
He wants me to prosper, not just in my spirit, but in my body and in my soul, to grab hold of something bigger. The battles take place every day, but Jesus has some word for us that gives us a bigger picture. Where I grew up, and I, I think I actually am thankful for where I grew up and how I grew up, because I, I was grounded in the very foundation of, the, of God's word, and I am grounded in the Bible stories. But somewhere along the line, I missed the key. That it's more than just going to heaven someday. And that's what I used to hear. Well, you just wait because it's going to be really good because someday we're all going to be in heaven in the by and by and it's going to be glorious there. I thought, well, that's all and good, but I've got 70, 80 years left to live. And I'm struggling here. What does Jesus say about who he is? It's so important to go back. If you ever wonder about anything, go back and look at what Jesus says about himself. Go back into the Gospels and, and, and do a search and say, who are you? Because when you're desperate for him, he reveals himself. And sometimes it takes desperation. We might have a question in our mind, but we really are, don't really care about the answer. But when you're really hungry and when you're really desperate, you'll go to any length to get food. Amen? It says in John 10, 7 3, 11. In his own words, he said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. That word life is zoe in Greek. It's the God kind of life. It's the absolute fullness of life in every way. It's not just life in that I breathe. It's not just life in that my spirit is renewed when I ask Jesus Christ to come in as my Lord and Savior that all of a sudden I who am dead am now live again. It's I embrace everything. It's living in God's kind of life. I prosper in everything. Did Jesus, and this was the question I started asking, wait a minute, is it possible that there is something more to the cross than what I was taught? That Jesus paved the way for more than just eternity. But in the cross, he took care of, of what I need for every day. Is it possible on the cross and what he did on the cross, he opened the door that I could have victory in my everyday moments? In Isaiah 6, 1 through 4, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn to grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Jesus comes to the temple. We see him in Luke 4, and he picks up and he goes right to this very passage. And he starts to proclaim to them in Luke, starting in verse 16 in chapter 4, he says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and was his custom. And he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me. To proclaim good news to the poor, he sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the tenant and sat down. And then the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. No one is more poor than the man without Christ. No one is more captive 
than the one who is in, the, in their soul is plagued by depression and thoughts of suicide. No one needs to be set free more than the one who is blind and impressed in both body and spirit. And that passage, he talks about more than just saving me for eternity. He talks about how he came to set me free. Because I can live my life and have Jesus Christ in my life, because I know, because I live this. I was saved when I was young, but I lived many years in captivity in my soul. Because I didn't understand that he had set me free there also. And by faith, all I had to do was grab hold of that. I didn't understand because I was still somewhat blind. But to the poor, he proclaims good news. To the captive, liberty. To the blind, recovery. When Jesus stood there, he declared something more. He came because he wanted to make us whole. in spirit, in soul, and in body. There's many places where he uses that word. But there's one passage that we, I want to go to today, and it's a very interesting passage found in Mark chapter 5. And a woman comes to him. Actually, he's in the midst of a crowd headed somewhere else. And this woman stops him. And she to me, represents where I was. Going to many things, trying to find the answer. Starts in verse 21. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. This is out of King James Version. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. She shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood for twelve years, she had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, she came in, the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, if I may just touch his clothes, if I can just get hold of that, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked around a bit about to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. There's so many things in there that just catch you. Because she came to be healed in her body, but in that day, she was healed in more than just that. If you have been dealing with something that long, and you have spent all you had, you are desperate. And your your mind is troubled. You just can't even begin to see how there could be a way out for 12 years. Because we all know that when something is in our bodies, when we're fighting something physically, it wears on us in our soul. She was worn down. And somehow she heard about Jesus. If I just touch his garment, I can be made whole. Whole. That word whole in Greek is sozo. It's also the word we get saved. It's translated saved. It's also translated make whole, heal, be whole. 
It means to save, deliver, protect, heal, preserve, save self, do well, be made whole. There's something in there that just caught me as the last. When he said to a daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Because it first starts in my spirit, doesn't it? I grab hold of God's word there. And then it kind of spreads. He says, go in peace. That moment, her soul was touched. Her mind, which was troubled. Instead of being troubled, now she had peace. And be made whole of thy plague. Her body, in her body, she received healing. Jesus had so much more to give you and I. So much more that for our every day. And Isaiah talks about how he was a man despised and rejected. And there's something that just catches me right there. It says, surely has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Surely. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, my sins. He was crushed for my iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. When we take communion, it's such a picture of that. And I was actually did that this morning, and as I was doing it, it caught me once again, because when when he broke the bread, said, do this in remembrance of me, what was that for? Because the very next thing, he takes the cup and said, this is the cup of my new covenant, With his stripes that he bore on his body, he paved the way for my healing. On that day, I was healed. Totally made whole. When he was dying on the cross, one of the last words he spoke, actually the last word, he said, it is finished. It's done for all time. He did the complete work then why don't we walk in it? Why don't we walk in it? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith came one day and I understood finally that he had paid the price for my sin. And on that day, I received by faith what he had done, the grace he had bestowed upon me. By faith, I take hold of his peace. By faith, I go into his word and I see that he's my healer. And by faith, I stand, I I take claim there. And by faith, I grab hold of that. See, we're the ones who stop it because we don't believe. We're we're the ones who stop. It's not on his. and, And that day when he said it was finished, it was finished. Everything that I ever needed was finished on that moment. I stop it. And my, by my choice, I don't grab hold of it. In ignorance, I live there for a long time, but no longer. Because he has sent his word that I could be free. Every moment, in the big moments of my life and in the small moments of my life, there is something to be grateful and thankful for. Because you might be battling something in that moment, you might be depressed and discouraged. But here's something to be thankful for. He has given me his peace. And in that moment when I discourage, instead of wallowing in my discouragement, start giving him thankfulness for what he has done on the cross for you. Thank you, Lord, that in this moment I'm not going to look at being discouraged. I'm going to look at what your word said. Thank you that, Jesus, you promised me that you gave me this peace. Not as the world gives, but your peace you've given me. That in this moment by faith, even though I, I don't feel it, because we base too much on our feelings, even though I feel it by faith, I'm going to grab hold of that. You are my peace. And in this moment, I'm going to grab hold of peace. And I refused to wallow in discouragement. I refused to, to, to take hold of that. What does that mean for me today? That God cares about every one of my moments. That he's done everything he can on the cross that I might have life and have it abundantly. 
through his atoning work. He's given me his Holy Spirit to help me walk that out, and his word to shine light on the path and bring direction and victory. If I choose by faith, like the woman with the issue of blood, I too can walk whole in my body and my soul and my spirit. He brings restoration. He brings life. He brings freedom. See, we're concerned too much sometimes because when you talk and even, and even grab hold of a little bit in your message about healing, right away people are like, well, I'm still battling something. Why? We, we worry too much about the why and the where and the when and the how instead of just resting in the who. It's not for me to know all that. It's for me to just grab hold of the fact that Jesus is my healer, and today I can be healed because he has paved the way. And I don't care about how that's going to get answered anymore. I'm going to look at him and him alone. And every day, I'm going to learn to give thanks. This is a message for me because there is something, a physical thing that I am battling and sometimes it can be a little bit discouraging. But as I was preparing this, I'm like, you know what, Lord, you can't prepare something and not let it speak to yourself first. He says, learn to give thanks in that moment. Learn just to give thanks that I'm your healer. Learn just to give thanks that you're the, the answer Sometimes we forget to do that. Yet, last week we learned in the verse, in everything give thanks. Why? Because it's God's will for us. Because I learned to give thanks, guess what? I'm not concentrated on the problem anymore. I'm concentrated on the who and the answer. As I learned to give thanks, I stopped thinking about myself. Thank you, God. And I start proclaiming something, even if I don't see it in the natural right then. I start proclaiming who he is and what he is. And guess what? He rides over everything. His name is greater than anything. Amen? In Psalms 40, he says, I, He is your help and your deliverer. I waited patiently for the Lord. He climbed to me and he heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog. He set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O oh Lord, my God, your run to streets and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. In verse 16, it says, And may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is our Lord. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. I love that verse. The Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, oh my God. We spend too much time thinking about ourselves, And sometimes when we do that, we don't say thank you. What if we learned in our everyday moments to give thanks? As I was kind of putting this together, these are the things, and, and I'm going to read this. This is what I wrote, and it's from my heart, and it's still from my heart. I even actually added some stuff this morning. But what if we stop and give thanks? Because here's what. He sends peace when we are troubled. Strength when we are weary. A word of wisdom when we stumble. He sends a smile from a stranger to let us know we are not forgotten. The warmth of the sun to remind us he's there. I don't know if you ever thought about that. He is the shepherd who guides us to still waters and green pastures, the one who leaves the 99 to find us when we are lost and carries us when we are hurting. He's the line of Judah when we need bravery. His name is a tower we can run into and find safety. 
His faithfulness is our shield and buckler. His wings are our refuge. He commands angels to guard us in all our ways. He is at our right hand and we cannot be shaken. He prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Our names are written on the palm of his hands. He can never forget us. He's the father when we are the prodigal and his arms are open. He is the whisper in the chaos to remind us he's got it. He's our healer, our savior, our deliverer, our shepherd, our righteousness, our banner over us, our sanctifier, our provider, our creator who knows us better than we know ourselves. He's our prince of peace, our king, our lord, our high priest, our intercessor, kinsman, redeemer. He's the sovereign, true and faithful, the rebuilder of broken walls and lives. The arms that carry us, our strength and shield, our mediator and our faithful pastor. Almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing. Son of man, Lamb of God, King of kings, Lord of lords, the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the great I am. Give thanks. I don't know about you, but knowing that, he's all those things. You know, and I, 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 was, I, I, mean, I was getting excited when I was putting that together. I don't know about you, but inside, I wasn't being as quiet as you were. I was like, ah. He's all those things, because you know what? He is my pastor when I need someone. In that moment when I'm desperate, he's the shepherd. If I just reach out and grab hold of him by faith, he's the one who's always promised to guide me. And something that I didn't add at the end, it says his mercy and loving kindness pursue me all the days of my life. In that moment, I can be discouraged. Well, stop and look because he's at your right hand. And when you feel and you're on the ground and you think there's no hope, he's the one that's underneath you and he's got you, he's carrying you. There's, there's a poem a long time ago that just ministered to me. It's called Footsteps. I don't know if anybody's ever read that. But there's only one set of footsteps and the person is just, I don't understand. Where were you? Because they look at the footsteps and go, where was God? That was the moment of my greatest pain and my greatest heart. Where were you? He was the one who was carrying. See, it wasn't my footsteps. It was his footsteps. And he was carrying me. In everything, in every moment of our lives, we should stop and give thanks. And let our focus not be on us, but be on him. He's the answer when you're looking for one. He's the great I am. And whatever you need, go to him. Because he is, I am your supply. I am your healer. I am your deliverer. I am your sovereign. I am your right hand. I am the one who carries you. I am the one who heals you. I am the one whose banner is over you. I am the one who died for you and paved the way for you. I am the one who's come to make you whole. And as we learn today, one more thing, I am the one who has set you free. He is worthy of that. How can we not stop and give thanks? Let's stand. I am so grateful for what he has done. And if we just stop and start thinking about who he is, I'm, I'm telling you, there aren't enough pages that you could write about all the ways he has taken care of you, all the ways he has watched over you, all the ways he has answered you, all the ways, all the promises he has for you. There's not enough time in our life to give thanks. Praise God, we have eternity too. Amen? Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for who you are. I thank you that in every moment of every day, Lord God, you are more than enough. And sometimes, Father, we focus too much on us and not enough on you. When you should be our focus. And so I pray, Lord, today for, each, for, for me personally and for those of us who want to grab hold of this, I pray today that you would be magnified, that you would be lifted up, that we would be decreased, as John prayed, and you may be increased in us. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that in our everyday moments, Lord, 
we need to learn to give thanks. Because we miss the moments you reach out to us. The stranger who opens the door, we just walk right out. When you sent them, our child who comes in and just smiles at us, and we don't say thank you enough for that. And Father God, I just pray, Father, that as we go through our weeks and through our days, Lord God, that we would be people of all people that would have a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving. And that we of all people would be the ones who give thanks. And Father, I thank you today. And Father God, I just pray right now, if there's someone who is brokenhearted, that today, Father, they hear this word. I am has come for you. Because you alone, Lord God, are the healer. You are the savior. You're the restorer of broken lives. And so, Father God, by faith, I pray, Father God, that they would grab hold of that truth for themselves. Father, I thank you. And if there's someone here today or listening online that has never made you their Lord and their Savior, your word says that you loved for God so loves the world that he gave his one and only son, that Jesus came specifically for that reason. And that you died on the cross. And you bore our sins and our sickness and our disease. You took it all so that we could be made whole. And by faith today, They come before you and ask for forgiveness of sins and ask you to come into their life to be their Lord and by faith they appropriate everything that you have for them. I thank you, Father, today that you are all those things and more. And we give you praise and honor and glory. Pray a special blessing over everyone that's listening, over everyone that's present. God, that you would bless them, that God, in their everyday moments, they would learn beyond all things who their God is and how much you care for them. I thank you, Father, for that. In Jesus' name, you have all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If anyone needs prayer, we are up here, and we would love to pray for you. And take time, you know, sometimes just stop before you walk out, because that's our first thing. Oh, yeah, we're done now, so let's just grab our stuff and leave. And that's cool. I know we all have things to do. But you know what? Stop and just take a moment and say thank you to him. Stop and just say thank you to him because he loves you. If you need prayer for anything, we're here. Especially if you have never made a decision to ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord, we are here. And we would love to guide you and lead you into salvation. Thank you. God bless.